Welcome in everyone and welcome to the latest edition of Match Day Minus One. Adrian Healy and Michael Hood here with you. We do it every single week right before uh, Austin's latest uh, MLS game. It is presented by PointsBet, the founding partner of Austin FC. We are coming to you live on Twitter and Facebook. You can uh, catch a recording of this show a little later on on YouTube. Uh, a lot of firsts to get into this week. Austin's first row game of the season. Their first game against a Western Conference opponent. Before that, let's do a little thing, Michael, we like to call the after party. And uh, maybe we could call it the afterglow. It's still <laughs> the, the glowing embers from, yep. from Austin's uh, opening two-game homestand, the latest of which was uh, another five-goal outburst against Miami. Um, just thoughts about what we've seen so far uh, just a few days on after the dust has settled. I think we're seeing the makings of a team that is figuring out how to not just compete in Major League Soccer, yep. but to really establish their identity on the field and to win games doing it in the way they know how to, which is being ruthless. Yeah, I think that that is the biggest step forward I've seen from these players and this group is it's not just enough to win 1-0, 2-0, 2-1. It's more to put five and it's a five-star performance in back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah. So the evolution of the team is is plain to see. I, you know what hasn't changed? The, yeah. the atmosphere at Q2 Stadium. If anything, yeah. it's got even more dynamic. The supporters were just magnificent, I thought. Uh, the, the, the brilliant TIFO against uh, oh. Miami really really set the scene. How could the team not perform after, after seeing that? <laughs> I, I got the chills, and you and I had yeah. the chance to be spectators and really be fans for this national TV broadcast. And when I saw that TIFO drop, it I, just the emotions yeah. and just the pride in being part of this club came through. Yeah, I love it. Welcome to Austin, soccer capital of Texas. Can't be any doubt about it. Uh, won't hear any argument. Um, let's go on to the stars. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Wolf and and Sebastian Drusi. Let's let's give both of them a little bit of a shout out. Start off yeah. with the coach because you know he took his took his lumps last year as a yeah. first year coach, and this is this is a big moment for him uh, making making MLS Coach of the Week for the very first time. It's massive, and it's a credit to to him and just sticking with what he knows. Mm. He has a stamp that he's put on this team, possession oriented, dynamic. We heard these words before the team even kicked the ball. And now it's coming to fruition. And what was missing so much last year was goals. And mm. now they've got 10 goals. How many games did it take them yeah, they, to get it, 10 goals? They were into mid-July last, mid -July last yeah. year before they got to And now two games in, yeah. check mark, yeah. done. And you got to play who's in front of you. I know some pundits, we've said it again from the Twitter spaces, I know there's some naysayers, but this team thrives off naysayers. Yeah. And they have a good opponent to discontinue the Verde machine. And it seems like uh, when we continue the theme of the stars on a national level, at least somehow Sebastian Drusi up to this point has somehow flown under the radar. We we didn't oh. see it. We, we were singing his praises right from day one. Yeah, he's just kicked it up another notch this year. And now suddenly people are starting to sit up and take notice, aren't they? What I love about the way Sebastian Drusi is playing is he's playing with a swagger. Yeah. And so is everyone else as he goes. This team follows. And he, he's establishing himself not just as an offensive leader, but a leader of this team alongside the Alex Rings. And even a player next to him, Diego Fagundes, is stepping up as a leader and go-to player for this team. But there was a moment that encapsulated Driussi's Drew, performance, which was late in the game, two Inter-Miami players yeah. converge on him, and then he nutmegs one and back heels the other, and the Verde and Black are off on a counter yeah, and they yeah. almost scored. Yeah. That's just class personified. All right. How about uh, an unsung hero, the, the the polar opposite to the stars? Who's uh, who's who's really stood out to you in that department this week? There's several candidates, really. You could you could talk about who, who are you going to go with? For I'm going to give our backline some love, yeah. and I I keep each week I see him and we have a conversation about. Him. I'm going to give just the Brate himself, John Kolmanich. Yes, I've been impressed with just his progression as a player. We knew he could get forward offensively, and he showed that. On the first goal, it was his entry pass into Maxi Aruti, where he blows by his mm. defender, blows by him, leaves him in the dust, and then plays a very smart ball into Aruti, who's central. And 1v1 defending, he's improved. He's yeah. being more physical and getting tighter to his man. So he deserves a shout-out for yep. me. 
A couple of assists already in two games, up to six assists already in his, his brief MLS career. He's been one of the most productive uh, fullbacks yeah. in the league, hasn't he? Uh, so let's pivot now to Saturday night. And the Portland Timbers, a very different prospect, uh, very yeah. different game in store. As we say, Austin uh, on the road for the first time. They're leaving, uh, actually, as we speak now from mm -hmm. St. David's to to make the four-hour flight up there. Um, the Timbers, you know, Josh Wolf is pretty pretty open about it. He considers them one of the two best teams yeah. in the West. And, and certainly, you know, their track record in the past eight years backs that up firmly. They, you know, the MLS Cup finalists just, just a few months ago. Made three MLS Cups in seven years now. Uh, they they are a class act, and they, you know, they they do simple things, Michael, but they do them very well, don't they? They do, and they know when to turn it on. Yeah, they're a team that manages the course of a season well, <laughs> and there must be something in the water in Cascadia because them in Seattle have figured something out in the Western Conference and ways to get to MLS Cups. Yeah. What makes this Portland team so difficult to play against is they let you have the ball. Similar to Inter Miami, they seed possession, uh. but the difference with them is they have the athleticism and explosive players to punish you in transition. I see them sitting at midfield in this game, allowing Austin FC to have the ball, which typically you don't see home teams yep. do when yep. they're playing in front of their fan base. And they're going to try to hit the Verde and Black on the counter. Let's have a little Lahoud mood prelude. Can we add that to it? We'll get the full Lahoud mood yeah. tomorrow night when we're at Q2. Uh, what do Austin need to do to win this game? What's, what's the key to the game for you? They're, the most important thing is going to be patience when they do have the ball. Portland is a team you have to move the ball side to side. They, they want to bait you into passing the ball centrally and then hit you on the counter. But to unlock this team, you're going to have to wait for the gaps to open up. And Danny Pereira is going to be very important Yet again, the young center midfielder starting the season strong. Mm. He's going to be a key player in that. And second, I would say set pieces. Yeah. They're a team that is vulnerable on set pieces. They've scored offensively come playoff time last year, but some of their key players may not be there. I think of Mabiala, yeah. one of them. And so Austin FC being a team that's being strong on set pieces, they've scored maybe three goals off set pieces. I know Julio Cascante would be liking his chances yeah. going back to familiar – place that he used to play so i think those two things we're doing the prelude not the full thing so those two things not the three yeah those two things will be important maxi rudy going back to his former uh, stomping ground as I, fa I fancy him fancy him to get a goal i said that last week and yeah. I, did he get a goal i think that's still that's still up for a debate <laughs> we'll, we'll come to that um statistically let, let, let me give you one great stat and i'll cheat and i'll, uh, I'll give you give you a couple actually Let's talk about the form that the Portland Timbers are in. From the time that Austin beat Portland last August, their mm. second victory at Q2 Stadium against the Timbers, 3-1, the end of August. From that moment on, this Timbers team have just taken off. Yeah. They run towards the end of last year and into the, into the playoffs all the way to MLS Cup. And starting off with this year, they've since lost just once in 20 MLS games. That's regular season wow. and playoffs. So that's the sort of form this Timbers team are in. Okay, they haven't won this season, but they haven't lost either. It, it's, a, it's a tough task to go there. A couple of individual notes. Felipe, should he come on? Only 40 minutes away from uh, 23,000 minutes wow. in MLS. He will be the 56th player ever to reach that mark. And a nod to our, our friend Cecilio Dominguez. He still is the only player to have played in every Austin FC game over the club's uh, first two seasons. I'm sure that's a, a run that will continue at uh, Providence Park. Uh, a moment of gratitude, Michael, as we get near the end of this match day minus one. Uh, we try and single out uh, something, a person mm. yeah. within the Austin FC community that we're thankful. We're going to keep it close to home this week and give a nod out to uh, a shout out to our Spanish yeah. partners, our, our fellow broadcasters, Sonny Guadarrama, and Roger Valdivieso, yeah. Spanish broadcasters every week on Univision, but also now an integral part of our of our pregame show in English, Michael. They're both of them yeah. fantastic in English as well. And uh, I'll start with Sonny. It's, it's been really cool as a former player as well alongside him. It's been cool to see his maturation process as a broadcaster. Yeah. And you called it, you penned the name, <laughs> Austin Royalty. Yes. Uh, he was been a flag bearer in the soccer community, one of the many in the city of Austin for years, doing it in Liga MX, doing it here in the States. 
So it's it's really cool to yeah. be on the desk with him and Roger, years of experience. Yeah. And he's showing it he can do it, both English and Spanish. Yeah, Roger, a former uh, colleague of mine at ESPN as well, where he was on the ESPN Deporto side. So fantastic mm. to be able to bring those two into the poll. They do sterling work, again, with us in English on the pregame show, but also their own Spanish broadcast on Univision in every game. Even when there's a national game, they're on the Spanish yeah. uh, radio broadcast as well. So... That will about, just about do it for today's uh, Match Day Minus One. This is always great doing this, Michael. Yeah. Uh, here at St. David's behind us, we've got the Drewsy <laughs> shirt up in, in honor of uh, uh, the, the Diamonds uh, performance of late. Um, can't wait till tomorrow night. It's going to be cold. We're, we're broadcasting from Q2 Stadium, yeah. uh, as we do for all road games. Half-hour pregame show. It'll start at 8.30 p.m. Austin time. We'll be on the desk on the concourse. You're going to be wrapped up again. It's going to be cold, isn't it? <laughs> you will you will not see these hands because they'll be in the biggest pair of Mickey Mouse gloves almost. Sonny, Sonny Guadaraba is going to have to get that, uh, that that coat of his out again. For, <laughs> the cashmere coat. Yes, indeed. Uh, Roger will be with us. So 8.30 p.m. for the pregame show. We'll get you uh, everything to lead you up to uh, a 9 p.m. start. All of that, of course, is on the CW right here in Austin. And on the radio, our friend Lincoln Rose. Let's give him a nod to... 97.5 is uh, where the call of the game can be heard. Thanks for your company, and we'll look forward to talking to you on Saturday night.